Hey everyone, welcome to another video from Between CAD Classes. This time we are creating a 3D model in AutoCAD. You can see the print in front of you of what I'm going to be working from. If you would like a copy of this print so that you can try this yourself, please take a look at the description of this video and you'll find a link for the image file. For this particular one, I'll be creating some sketches and doing some extruding, adding some chamfers, and adding a lot of fillets. So let's get started. Here I am in AutoCAD, and I'm going to start with the left side of the part. So I'm going to draw this portion over here on the left side with the curved shape. By default, when I start a new drawing, I'm on the XY plane, the flat horizontal plane. So I actually want to adjust that so I can sketch the front. I'm going to click my Home button here above my view cube so I can see exactly that and I'm on the flat XY plane. I've already set my 3D modeling workspace current, so make sure you do that if you haven't done that already. Another thing that I've already set is I've turned on the display of my dynamic UCS button. I'll be turning this option on and off, but if you don't see this option on your status bar, click the three option lines in the bottom right corner of your screen, and then you can select dynamic UCS to turn that button on. I'm going to switch to my home tab if I'm not there already, and I'm going to change my view to the front view. So this will rotate my view cube, but it will also change my XY plane. I'll begin sketching here, and I am going to start with a circle. So I will just simply sketch the circle with a radius of one, and I'll go ahead and just kind of put this anywhere here. Again, I'll enter a radius of one for that circle. Then I will draw in some lines. So I'm going to snap to the quadrant of this circle and then over 1.75 and enter, down two and enter, and then back over here to the quadrant again. Then I'm going to use my trim command to trim out the part of the circle that I don't need. Then I'm going to switch back to my home view. So here we can see my vertical plane here basically. I could use press pull in which case I don't have to join this together, but it leaves the sketch lines behind. So I personally like to use extrude, which means I have to join them first. So I'll click the modify dropdown, then select join. I'll go ahead and select all the shapes and press enter. And I can now see that I have one continuous shape there. Next, I'm going to extrude this shape. So taking a look at my print here, I can see that the on the right side of the part, it has a radius of 1.25, so that means the full depth of the part is 2.5. So back here in AutoCAD, I'll choose my Extrude command. I will select my shape and Enter. If I look at my UCS, a positive extrusion value is going to come forward. A negative will go backwards. Really, in the scheme of things, it might not matter which way you go. I'm going to force it to go backwards, so I'm going to put in a negative 2.5 at my command line, like so. And then in my upper left corner, it's hard to see because I've got a purely back background, but I can switch my view style. Instead of 2D wireframe, I'm going to go to shaded with edges. That also ch changes my background color as well. Next, I am going to add in the cut shapes on top of this part. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and change my UCS so that I'm on the top of this part. So I'm going to maybe rotate my screen around here a little bit. And then I am going to use my three-point UCS. I'm going to click this corner as my new origin, and then straight this way for my new X direction, and then straight along this edge for my new Y direction. Now I want to locate this rectangular cutout. So if we take a look at the print here, we can see that from this bottom right corner of that feature, it needs to go half an inch to the left and then half an inch up. So I'm going to draw a construction line. I'll start a construction line at 0, 0 and enter. So that will put me at that new origin. It's going to go to the left 0.5, so that'll be negative, and then up. 0.5. So I'm going to use relative coordinates. I like to use relative coordinates a lot when I'm working in 3D. So I'm going to put in at negative 0.5 comma 0.5. And that will give me a construction line that goes to the left from the origin, negative 0.5, and then up 0.5. So that will be the corner of the rectangle. As I look at my print once again, we can see that the thickness of the cutout is going to be half an inch. And as far as the width of it, as long as I draw it 
as long as or longer than the part, then I will be able to cut it out. So I'm going to make it three inches wide. So once again, back here in AutoCAD, I'm going to use my rectangle command, and then I'll snap to that point. I often use relative coordinates when I'm drawing rectangles. So I want this to go to the left three and then up five. So I'm going to type in my command line at negative three comma 0.5 and enter. And that will give me my rectangular shape. If we look at the print here again, we can see that we then have half an inch of material and then another half inch cutout. So basically it's another cutout one inch above the original one. So I'm going to come back in here to AutoCAD and just use my plain old copy command, select my rectangle and enter, pick a base point and then snap to the vertical 90 degrees and type one and enter. And that will give me my other shape that I want to extrude. I'll escape out of that and erase my little construction line here. Here's a little trick when you're working in 3D. If it's not selecting the item that you want, hold the shift key and then tap the space bar. And that will cycle through the different options. So when I see it highlighting the line, I'll go ahead and click to select it and then delete. Now I'm ready to extrude both of these shapes. So I'll select the extrude command, select both shapes and enter. And then I don't really care about the depth of these as long as it's longer than the part. So I'll just click where I see it go below the part. Then I'm ready to cut. So here on the home tab in the solid editing panel, I'll select cut. I'll select the main shape first, then press enter, then select the pieces that I want to cut and press enter. And that will give me my cutouts there. Next, I'm going to add the hole. Rather than change the UCS, I'm going to use dynamic UCS for this one. So I'm going to select that option on my status bar. Again, we talked at the beginning of the video how to get that button to show up if you're not seeing it. Then I'm just going to start the circle command and then I can now snap to the center of this surface. With dynamic UCS on, it automatically highlights that surface. So we are told that it is a diameter of 0.75. I just started the radius option, so I'm going to go ahead and divide that by two and put in a radius of 0.375, and then enter. Then once again, I will extrude that shape, and if it's not letting me highlight, I'm gonna hold shift and tap the space bar, then select it and press enter, and then once more extrude it longer than the part. Now I'm ready to subtract it. So I will subtract, select the main part, then enter, select the cylinder and enter, and I've now cut that shape out. So now we're ready for the other shape here. And I can tackle this several different ways. I can create the shape and move it into place, or I can get my UCS exactly where I want it to be. I'm gonna tackle it by sketching it here on the front and extruding it into the part. So I'm going to click my drop down once again, even though it already says front, I'm going to select front so that it sets my UCS and changes my location. I'm going to turn off dynamic UCS for now, just in case. And then I am going to start with a rectangle. So I'll start with the rectangle command. As I look at the print, this piece is going to be one inch thick, and I'm going to draw the full width of three. I'll come back and add the curve shape after. So it's going to be three inches to the right and one inch up, basically. And then the full height of the part was two, so that means the rectangle is going to be a half inch from the bottom. So back here in AutoCAD then, I'm just going to track off of this point and then come up 0.5 and enter. And that will give me my first rectangle point. And then using relative coordinates, I'm going to type at three comma one and enter to get that rectangular shape. I'll rotate my screen here a bit. And sometimes what happens when you're drawing directly at a surface is sometimes you think you're tracking off the front one, but it actually tracked off of the back one. Not a huge deal. We'll just extrude this forward. So I'll choose my extrude tool, select the shape and enter and then it needs to come forward 2.5 inches. So I'll type 2.5 and enter, and then I'll have the start of this next shape. Next, I want to round the side over here. Looking at the print, we can see that it has a radius of 1.25. So back here in AutoCAD, then I'm going to use my 3D fillet tool. To find this, I'm going to the solid tab. And then here in the solid editing panel is fillet edge. 
Once I select it, just like the 2D fillet command, I need to set the radius. So in the command line, I will select radius and then type 1.25 and enter. Then I will pick the vertical edge here. It'll give me a bit of a preview. I'll press enter once to get more of a preview here and then press enter one more time to finish the fillet. So I'll rotate around here and do the same thing to this one. Fillet edge. You can see just like the 2D version, it remembered the last radius. So I will select the edge and then enter twice. And I now have my round shape. Next, we're going to add the hole. So once again, using dynamic UCS, I'll turn that on. I need a circle with a diameter of one or a radius of 0.5. So I'll go back to the home tab, center radius. I will hover over the arc here to get the center point, then snap to it. And then a radius of 0.5 and enter. Then once again, I'm going to extrude this. I'll shift space to get the right selection and enter and just make it go through the part here. Then I can come back with a subtract. So I'll subtract, select the main shape and enter, then select the shape I want to subtract. Next, I'm going to add the chamfers on the circular edges. So back here on the solid tab, I'll click the drop down under fillet edge and choose chamfer edge. Then again, just like the 2D command, I'm going to have to set my distances. So we're told that this is a 0 0.06 by 0 0.06 chamfer. So I will select distance, type 0 0.06 and enter. Now be careful here in the 2D version of this command, the default will be set to whatever you just typed in. That's not true here. You've got to actually physically type 0 0.06 again. Then I can go ahead and select an edge and enter twice, and that will add the chamfer. So I'll go ahead and spacebar to repeat and then hit it a couple more times to enter. Sometimes you got to be careful that it doesn't pick something in the background. You can see it picked the wrong edge back there. So I'm going to escape out of that and restart the command from a different angle and enter twice to get that chamfer. And then one more time, enter, select the edge, enter twice. And then I've got my shape. Next, I'm at, ready to add some fillets. And first, I'm going to add four fillets, one to this edge, and then the inside here, and then the same thing on the bottom. I want to show you something that happens right now if I try to do this. So these fillets are all 0.125. So I'm going to select my drop down and choose fillet edge, set my radius to 0.125. And then if I select this edge right here, you can see that it filleted in, not the way that I was wanting. So I'm going to undo that just by pressing Control Z at my keyboard. So why did it do that? It did that because these are still two separate solids. So before I can do this step, I need to union these parts together. So I'm going to select Union here from my Solid tab, or if you're on the Home tab, you'll find a smaller button right there. I'll select the two solid shapes and Enter. You can see the seam disappears and it's now one solid shape. So next I'm going to select just the four edges to round and it will be a little more obvious why I'm doing it this way in just a moment. So I'll choose solid, fillet edge, and radius, 0.125 and enter. And then I'll select the edge and then enter twice, just like with the chamfer command. I'll tap the space bar to repeat it again and then enter twice once more. You can select more than one edge at a time, but because I sometimes accidentally pick something in the background and have to escape out of the command, I prefer to just kind of do one at a time. So once again, I'll tap the space bar, select it, enter twice, tap the space bar, select it, and enter twice. So the reason why I did those four first is because now every other edge that I need to fill it exists in one continuous chain. So now I'm going to start the fillet edge command. I'm going to choose the chain option in the command line, and then I will select one of those edges. Now you can see that it picked up every tangent edge. I'll go ahead and enter twice. And there we can see our final part with all of the rounds. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Please like and subscribe. Like I said earlier, if you want to try this yourself, please check out the description. I have a link to the image there. As always, thank you so much for watching.